Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Doc Ed Padama and this time we are going to discuss one of the most common questions given to us when we go on live or discuss inside our classroom regarding research writing and this is the difference between the use of the terms method and design or specifically research method and research design. So we'll try to simplify this discussion by presenting the definitions of each term and then comparing and contrasting them, putting them in their right place in uh, for us to be able to see a better perspective of how this particular terms function uh, in, in a particular way wherein they work together. They are not the same. They cannot be interchanged, but they are definitely related to each other. And this is what we are going to present. How is method related to design? Or how is research method related to research design? So starting off with the definition of method, this refers to the specific procedure, a specific procedure in order to accomplish a goal. Okay, so a specific procedure, this particular procedure is already accepted by a community, specifically the research community, meaning this has already been not only proven by you, but used, not only proven, but also used by researchers and scientists alike. Okay, this is what we mean by method. This has already been utilized over and over again by the scientific community and the research community in order to conduct research. Okay, it is a set of procedures used by and accepted by these communities. Okay, while on the other hand, when we talk about design, design is a plan, usually literally, when we talk about architectural design, you, you can see blueprints with uh, lines, drawings, presenting the specific spaces allotted for a specific area. This is what you are planning to do. That is why the definition of design, it is a plan. It is a layout that you want to achieve or you want to do or the path that you are going to use. That's why in our definition, it serves as a guide in order to accomplish a goal. You can already have a vision of what you want to accomplish in your research by using or choosing a design for your research, which is called the research design. So this is the difference between method and design. Method is how you want to do the research while design is the plan that you want to implement or that you, you want to visualize in order to accomplish your research. Okay, now, <clears throat> after setting the foundation for the differences between method and design, what are the different types of research methods and what designs are under each method? So again, this is how they, they coexist with each other. Every type of research method has a corresponding research design. Every type of research method has a corresponding research design. Example of this research method, number one is we have quantitative method. So you are already familiar with these types of research method. You have quantitative and the other one is qualitative. And you have another one which is mixed method. Mixed method is also known as hybrid or quanti-quali or quantitative-qualitative, a combination of these two methods. Okay, so when we talk about quantitative method, uh, earlier, I was trying to reflect how would we be able to simplify <clears throat> the difference between quantitative and qualitative methods. So, I'd, I'd like to uh, use this metaphor by uh, presenting or setting quantitative on the area or perspective of logical. Not that qualitative is not logical, but I was referring to the, the function of the brain. So half of your brain is logical, half of the brain is artistic. 
Okay, based uh, if I recall it correctly from my previous lessons during my tertiary uh, level. So if this is compared to the two hemispheres of your brain, the left and the right, I would put personally, this is my opinion, I would put quantitative on the logical side while qualitative can be placed on the artistic side. I'm going to explain later on. Okay? So, why is it logical and artistic? When we talk about quantitative, quantifiable, when you quantify something, generally, it can be measured. Anything that can be measured. Okay? So, we're going to compare and contrast them simultaneously. Uh, un under qualitative, this is not measurable. Okay? It is not quantifiable. And when you measure something, if it can be measured, therefore, it uses data that is classified as numeric. And when you use numeric data, you also implement the use of different statistical formulas. So that is why I classify this under logical. Okay? It, it can be computed. It can be measured. It can be replicated. Replicable. Meaning if you recompute or use the same formula for the same set of data collected, you will, should, arrive at the same answer. Okay? So that is one of the characteristic of quantitative research or quantitative method of research. While on the other hand, uh, qualitative is not measure, measurable. So it does not use numeric values. So there is no numerical data. Because there is no numerical uh, numbers used in qualitative research. And therefore, there is no statistical formula used under qualitative research. Okay. So, qualitative research basically focuses on experiences. Okay. Aside from those uh, we have these examples later on. We're going to discuss uh, what else can be done under the qualitative research method. Okay, now, again, as you can see, we have already established the different types of research method. It can be quantifiable. A research method can be quantifiable. It can be measured. You can, you can uh, rank. You can sequence. The data gathered, you can organize them by ranking them, by sequencing them, by trying to identify the highest value, the lowest value, and so on and so forth. Wherein qualitative data, again, does not have these characteristics under quantitative. You just um, collect data by doing or implementing the data gathering procedures under qualitative research. That does not have anything or that doesn't have any uh, numeric uh, value relevant or related to the organization of your data. So there are no tables. There are no numbers involved. It's either you interview someone, you write the experiences of your respondents within the interview. You can, you can use focus group discussion for a particular uh, for a particular group or community. So this is how data is gathered under qualitative in contrast with quantitative research. <clears throat> so under quantitative research, we have the following research design. So this already refers to the research design. Okay? And then again here, we have these and the next part are these that is also part of what we call the research design so after choosing 
a particular method, what particular design would you like to implement? For example, I would like to conduct an experiment, a quantifiable experiment regarding the effectivity of a specific teaching strategy in the classroom, uh, specifically on the subject of math, gamification in teaching mathematics, okay? That particular research would fall under quantitative research method and under the design experimental research. Now, this particular research design, which is experimental, has two subtypes. You have the quasi-experimental or the true experimental. So quasi-experimental is where the groups uh, of respondents were manipulated uh, you you assign them and you make sure that they are comparable with each other. So that is the, the characteristic of quasi-experimental. In contrast with true experimental, true meaning the respondents are not manipulated. They are genuinely as is, where is in terms of their grouping. You do not, you do not uh, in any way uh, uh, tamper with the respondents in a true experimental research, okay? So, again, if the research that I want to propose is the effectivity of gamification in teaching mathematics, it would fall under experimental, and then specifically, it would fall under the quasi-experimental research design. Okay, so these are, again, some of the uh, quantitative research designs available for you to choose from. I would not uh, dwell into the details of these designs. I have a separate YouTube video for this uh, discussing comprehensively the difference, uh, the different research designs under quantitative and qualitative research. Now, under qualitative, if you can see, you have two uh, similar designs under quantitative and qualitative, which is descriptive. When we talk about descriptive, uh, this refers to narrating or writing uh, your this part of your research using narrative, narrative interpretations of data from numeric data. You narrate them or inter interpret them narratively. This is called descriptive under quantitative. But when we talk about qualitative, which is where descriptive originally started or, or uh, was originally uh, assigned for, descriptive is when, when somebody gives you their experience, you definitely would write it narratively. And this is supposed to be what qualitative or the essence of qualitative is. You write you write the experiences of the respondents that you are using in your research. Okay, and by the way, another difference between quantitative and qualitative is the number of respondents. Quantitative has a larger number of respondents, while qualitative has a uh, less, ve uh, more, less than quantitative research. Okay, because of the time effort, energy needed in order to accomplish a qualitative research. A uh, limited number of respondents are usually used in qualitative research. Okay, so that is the explanation why we have descriptive in both qualitative and quantitative research. And then aside from that, you have phenomenological, historical, case study, grounded theory, ethnography, and narrative. Again, I have explained this uh, designs, research method and designs uh, comprehensively in another video in my YouTube channel. You can check that out. But I would like to take one more research design and try to present an example as I have presented an example in the quantitative. And this is phenomenological. When we talk about phenomenological or phenomenon, this focuses on a phenomenon that happens within a community or society. A phenomenon is something, is an event, an event that cannot be easily explained or given a, an explanation. 
Okay? So, example of a phenomenological study are based on the experiences of or, or lived experiences of individuals in a particular situation. Example, right now, in the year 2021, uh, 2020, 2021, we had this uh, uh, pandemic that hit the world. Not only a country, but the whole world. Okay? And then it brought us to what we call the new normal. There are a lot of lived experiences that can be used as a research study within this particular period of time. Within, within this particular period wherein a lot of phenomenon, a lot of events cannot be explained. So we want to look for explanations for this and uh, with this, we can readily provide answers and recommendations for these particular experiences, the part experiences of specific people. So you can use specifically for this particular study, uh, experiences of nurses in a particular country, example is within Canada or Vancouver, Canada, during the pandemic. Filipino nurses, lived experiences of Filipino nurses uh, in Canada during the pandemic. Okay? Or, again, you can change the perspective of the person that you are investigating. You can also use lived experiences of teachers in the Philippines uh, during the pandemic or during online learning or during blended learning. Okay, so these are examples of what we call phenomenological study based on lived experiences of individuals or different individuals. So these are ideas that you can use in order to formulate your research or your study. So again, I hope this was able to clear something up regarding research method and research design. So Again, I would like to invite you to please check out my YouTube channel. If you have already looked it up, please do not forget to click subscribe. There is an icon that will appear on the lower right side of your screen. When you click that, you can readily subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on the left side of your screen, you're going to see recommended videos that can help you in writing your research paper. So my YouTube channel caters to both uh, Filipinos and foreign students or research enthusiasts alike. So there are videos that are uh, Tagalog or Taglish, Tagalog and English combination and pure English like this particular video that can be used by a wider variety of subscribers and followers in our YouTube channel. So again, thank you very much everyone and I hope to see you on our next video. Stay safe everyone. God bless. See you.